So summarily, this class is to teach sound biblical principles on the topics that have been listed. And based on years of my reading and following genuine men and women of God. Because any man or woman of God that does not learn or study, you will soon become obsolete. So I have people I follow. I have people that I read their materials. I have people I listen to. But most importantly, I read my scripture, I study my scripture, and I listen to God, the Holy Spirit. So all of that is what is going to bring you, and that will be none of my personal opinion that we are going to stick to the scriptures, and everything we say will be brought back in light of the scripture. So this is going to be made available on my YouTube channel, Reverend May Daniel, when we are finished with the editing of it, so that you can access it, and you can... If you want to send it to somebody, send it. I was going to restrict it before, but God said no. So we're just going to do what God has said. But for those who actually diligently attend the classes, apart from two people that have asked me for uh, excuse and say they can't come because of job, so please, can I make the recording available to them? Then you guys can get the certificate at the end of this. Free of charge. We're not charging anything. And the Lord will continue to help us in Jesus' name. So let's get straight to business. Please, if you have any question, can you write it down so that we don't interrupt the teaching? And then we can ask towards the end of the teaching. And if for any reason we don't have time enough to calculate, we will take it up in the next class. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's, let's get started. I want us to know and remember that the Bible is not just a book. That's why I feel annoyed when people call it a book. The word Bible might mean a book, Biblios, but no, Bible is not an ordinary book. You cannot be comparing it to any book. This is a special book. It's the Bible. It has its own name, Bible. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 to 17, it says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is prof profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. That is what the Bible is for. So this one that people are cherry picking, oh, I don't read the Old Testament, I don't read the New Testament, all scripture. Is given by inspiration. You cannot be cherry picking. If you believe in God, then the Bible is your constitution from Genesis to Revelation. There are 66 books in the Bible and it's written by about 40 different authors over thousands of years. And yet the information is saying the same thing is the only book in existence that can lay claim to this 66 books of the bible written by 40 different authors and yet the the information is integrated for those who are in it it's an integrated communication system that means it's saying the same thing or it is leading to the same direction so there's nothing like, oh, this one is going this way, that one is going that way. No, everything is going the same direction. If you study the scripture up to a point, you will find out that every part of the scripture speaks about Jesus. So the scripture is very, very important. And it is where we get our doctrine from. It is where we get our correction from. It is where we get our teachings from. Not from uh, eloquent speaking man or woman of God. We get it from the scripture. I told you how angry I was about, you know, the, the increase of, you know, teachers teaching nonsense. Eloquent teachers, but they're teaching nonsense. So one thing about the word of God, you can teach 99.5 truth. Once you add 0.5 light to it, everything is a lie. A little leaven, leaven the whole lot. That's what is written in the Bible. So he said that you are preaching 100% word of God 
or you are preaching a lie. And this is what makes these heretics very different. They will preach 99.5, 99.9% truth. They will just have point one lie to join it. And if you don't know the word of God for yourself, you will just swallow the whole thing. And, and the Lord told me, he said, the antidote to pervasive heresies is the balanced teaching of the word of God. And that's what I'm hoping to do over these 20 lessons. You remember the Bereans? The Bereans are a people that was mentioned in, in, in the Bible, in the book of Acts 17, 11. He said, these were far more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scripture daily to find out whether those things were so. Apostle Paul had just been in Thessalonica and he was being persecuted and they chased him out of the town. And when he got to, to the Bereans, the Bereans, they, they came, they turned up, they listened. But that's not the end of it. They went home to go and check the Bible, whether, what, what this man is saying, does it go with the Bible? And this is what many Christians today don't do anymore. You want your pastor to go and talk to God for you. You want a prophet to go and talk to God for you. You want a teacher to go and study for you. And you just come and just swallow everything they are saying. So if the teacher makes mistake, that means you, or automatically you will make mistake. No, we are all ministers of God. Every born again child of God is a minister of God. We are just called to different offices. And so if anybody is teaching anything, you have the right to challenge it from the scripture. Not just because you want to be awkward or you just want to, you know, pull rank or something. No, you should go and meet someone and say, ah, Oga, this thing that you've taught, I can't find it in the Bible. Can you please, you know, enlighten me? So I need everybody in this course to be a Berean. And if there are things that are not clear to you or you think it's not scriptural, please send personal message to my WhatsApp. Let us dialogue. I don't know everything. But as much and as I know, I'm going to share with you, with the help of God. So Sorry, this Dr. month Dr. of Dr. June, Dr. we are going to cover Trinity. Jesus, who is Jesus? Many Christians don't really know. And then the Holy Spirit. So they're going to be, uh, I believe, um, three, uh, it should be four, it should be four, four Thursdays. I think I've mixed it up. I think it's July, that is three Thursdays. But at least we're going to be looking at the Trinity. We're going to be looking at uh, Jesus. We're going to be looking at the Holy Spirit. That's for sure. That's a fourth one that I've not listed here. But it's on the list I sent to you. But these are the three congent ones. If you don't understand these three, you cannot be a successful Christian. You have to know the post. What is your view on Trinity? What is Who is Jesus? And who is the Holy Spirit? This is the starting point of Christianity. And unfortunately, many well-intentioned people have got it all twisted. So we're starting with Trinity today. I'll be going really quickly because of time, so that if you want to ask questions before the end, hopefully we'll be able to find time. But if I run out of time, write your questions down and send it to me. We'll treat it next, next class. <laughs> For those of you who are familiar with science, this is Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. Please don't worry if you are not a science person, it's not a big deal. But this was the equation they used to start to, you know the plane that you enter? This is the equation that gave birth to it. The rocket that go to the moon and to the planet, this is the equation that gave birth to it. Why have I included E is equal to MC squared in this teaching? Because it's a beautiful place to start what we're about to discuss. Albert Einstein was a Christian and he believed in God. He was also a genius who was a scientist. So he combined God with science. And while he was trying to study, you know, velocity and speed and things, God showed him a revelation. This is the part they don't publicize, but it is out there, Google it. God showed him a revelation and God said, I understand what you are trying to do, but you don't have an understanding. Let me help you. And God showed him that 
there's an alternative reality to the reality that we live in. So if the top speed where we live is, let, let's just say, for example, 100 kilometers, if that's the maximum speed on Earth, God told him there's another reality you can't see where it is times 1 million of that speed. And Albert Einstein was able to tap into that knowledge and get back to this simple looking equation that has changed the whole world. And they were able to tap into the speed of light and relate that to mass and things started to go quicker than we can imagine. That is to tell you that there is a different reality to this reality. Everybody thinks that only what they can see, touch, feel is the only thing that exists. And those are, that is kana. Kana means flesh, the things you can see. There is another reality you cannot see unless God opens your eyes unless your spirit is in tune and it is that reality that you need to be tapping into and what we are about to discuss today falls into that into that realm many people are trying their best to explain trinity with their brain so can you imagine a, 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 a mortal human being wants to explain an immortal god using their brain ah, ah, look at yourself in the mirror now it is not something you can use your brain to understand. So let's follow the scripture closely and let the Holy Spirit illuminate our mind. Because you will need the help of God to understand this concept. We start from 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. It says, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. This is one of the scriptures that messed many people up. The same thing you can find in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 5 to 6. Oh, Israel, don't you know that Lord God our God is one? So people, ah, but they, if they are one, why are you mentioning Father, Word, and the Holy Spirit? If they are one, why are you splitting them into three again? So this is where people started to get very confused. But it's a very simple, straightforward answer in the scripture. I'm still looking at Trinity in the scripture, not my own idea. So we know it's in the Bible. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 14. It says, you know, you know the, the, the popular thing now, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This is the verse, one of the verses that gave us an inkling into the personalities of the Godhead. That's why I've underlined it. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is associated with grace. Everything you, you've learned about grace is associated to that personality. Love, everything about love is associated to God the Father. Communion or fellowship, that is the attribute of the Holy Spirit. And yet, they are one. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When you look at Mark chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. Mark chapter 1, verses 10 to 11. And it says, and immediately coming up from the water, this was when Jesus was baptized. It's one of the places where clearly the three of them were in action. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven saying, you are my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus was coming out of the water where he was baptized. Holy Spirit was falling on him like a, like a dove. And a voice from heaven says, that is my son in whom I'm well pleased. This is one of the places where the Trinity actually came together and did different things. Hallelujah, glory to God. I can see that I've made a typo there. Forgive me. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. The book of Acts chapter 10, verse uh, 38. Another place where the Trinity and how they function was, uh, was mentioned. There are so many places. I've, I've kept it down because of the time constraints. How God, that's the, when, when, usually when they use God, it normally refers to the Father. Sometimes, not all the time. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. It was God that anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all who are oppressed by the devil? For God 
was with him. So clearly, this is showing us that these are three distinct individuals, and yet they operate as one. Three distinct personalities, and yet they operate as one. There are so many people that have come up with different theories. They believe it's only one God that divided himself into three. It's not impossible. I mean, I'm sure there's nothing God cannot do. But that is not scriptural. If you study your scripture and some of the things we'll be mentioning today, debunks that. There are some people that believe that there's only one God, there's only Jesus, and he's the one that is the Father in heaven, he's the one that came to this earth, he's the one that is the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Bible does not support that. If you try to use your brain to explain supernatural stuff, you will get lost. So you better stay close to the scripture so you don't get lost. It is said here, but the helper, John chapter 14, verse 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father, they're, they're saying the Holy Spirit is the helper, whom the Father will send in my name. So can you see now, helper, Holy Spirit, will be sent by God the Father in Jesus' name. He will teach you all things. And bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Without a shadow of a doubt, ladies and gentlemen, I put it to you that these are three distinct members of the Godhead, and yet their purpose is one. A lot of people struggle with this concept, but those who have been married a long time, especially when you have you've had a, a, a harmonious marriage. I'm not perfect. My marriage is not perfect. So I'm not here pretending to anybody. But I just want to use it to help somebody. If I'm in a room and my wife and I look at each other, I don't have to say anything. She knows what I'm thinking. And I know what she's thinking. Because we've been together 32 years and we've been married 30 years. So we have, we have, we have, we, there's been a lot of blending going on. We have, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have become that one flesh that God said we should become. If I'm in a place, I can tell, oh, my wife is uncomfortable. Let me go and rescue her. She doesn't have to tell me. She doesn't have to ask me. There is a level that some individuals will blend to. Their purpose will become one. Even though they are different in terms of distinct, but once their purpose is aligned, you cannot separate them. It's like having three people moving into a choreography and nobody's missing a step. There are still three different people, but they are moving in sync. And that is something we have never seen on our planet. That's why it confounds us. That's why we are bewildered by it. But that's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why they are God. They are not human beings. If you read and study your Bible, you'll be doing a lot of study in your personal time. You'll find the Trinity, the three of them are mentioned in that they have power. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If you search the Bible, you'll find out where they said all each one has got power, all the power. You find where they said each one is holy. You find where each one is omnipresent. You find which each of them is omniscient. You find out where each of them is, is, is attached to the truth and benevolence. The attribute you attribute to God the Father, you will find it in the Bible that is attributed to Jesus. If you study the scripture more, it is attributed to the Holy Spirit. That's something they did not teach us. We think, oh, there are certain things God the Father does, there are certain things Jesus does, there are certain things Holy Spirit does. That's the way I was taught. I can't talk for you until I studied. Until I, until I studied, listened to people that knew more than me. And I went back to the scripture like a Berean Christian to be sure what they were saying was true. And I'm like, ah, oh. but I bet you, anybody who is a student of the Bible, write these things down. It's more than this. This is what I could get into the slide. Any attribute you know about God that is mentioned in the Bible, you find that that is mentioned for all three of them. I'll just give, you know, a few examples here. You will find out that the Trinity was involved in creation. The three of them. 
they were the ones that, 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 that followed the children of Israel. They were the ones that helped with the birth of Jesus. Ah, I'm sure Pastor Sam is feeling uncomfortable. He's seeing all my typo here. He's the one that used to correct them. The birth of Jesus. The, all three of them were involved. Temptation of Jesus. The three of them were involved. Death and resurrection of Jesus. The three of them were involved. Salvation that we have. The three of them were involved. And I put Man Zion there. Man Zion is where the Godhead resides. That is where the throne of God is. And you find out in the Bible, the three of them are still there. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's look at creation because it, it, it suggests itself. You know, it suggests itself. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. This is one of the things that drew me into becoming a Christian. Bible is an audacious book. Can you imagine the first verse of a book? You just open it. In the beginning, God created it. They, they, they are not messing around. This is a claim. Now me make this thing. I made it. No, no, let, let there be no controversy. When you research into the word God there, the word Elohim is used, which means in the beginning, the gods created the heavens and the earth. In Hebrew, singular is Elo, E L, L. Elohim, anytime you have H I M, H I M, like uh, cherubim, uh, seraphim, it means plural. And this was where, it, during interpretation, many things were missed from this beginning of the interpretation of the Bible. Do your study and confirm if it is true or not. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, the gods created the heavens and the earth. I submit to you, ladies and gentlemen, that the Bible makes, makes it clear in all that the Father plans or wills, Jesus speaks, Holy Spirit does. They are in sync. Oh, let us make heaven and earth. Jesus said, let there be the Spirit go over it, over, boom, rearranging it. They are still doing the same thing. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, God planned to repair the earth. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, Holy Spirit overs over it. In Genesis chapter 1 3, Jesus starts to speak. Same thing is still happening. Unity in diversity. I've met, in fact, some men of God, they have you know, spiritual sons or you know, people they are discipling that have become almost one with them. If you if the if the man of God cannot go for an engagement and they send one of that if they send one of their spiritual children, it's almost like you are listening to them. They have become one. He doesn't even have to instruct him what to go and preach. He has taught him and discipled him to a point that that one will just go and regurgitate the old thing that God has given this man of God. The word Elohim or Elohim is a grammatically plural noun for gods or deities or various other words in Biblical Hebrew. And anything that ends up in 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 Hebrew or IM normally indicates a masculine plural. For those who are English students, they will get what I'm saying. But the simple thing is that Elohim means plural. It was not a singular entity that they are referring to. And this is confirmed in verses 26 to 27 of Genesis chapter 1. Then God, the same God that they mentioned in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, say, let us make man in our image. He didn't say, oh, let's make man. In my image. Let us make man in our. So this confirms that this is a group of people talking, not, not just one, not just one person, not just one being. 
I don't want to use the word person to, so I don't confuse you. These are, these, these are multiple beings talking. According to our likeness, then they can have dominion over, you know, you guys know the rest of it. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. When the word man is used in the Bible, it refers to male and female. That was the original thing that God created. The man reflecting God, the woman reflecting God. Malachi chapter 2 verse 10. He tells us, have we not all one father? Has not one God created us? Why do we deal treacher uh, treacherously with one another? By profaning the covenant of the fathers. This is one of, like, I don't know, I don't want to exaggerate. Let's call it 20 places in the Bible where it makes it clear that it's God the Father that created us. You can also find it in Psalm 102. Go and read it. Verse 25, I think. That God the Father made us. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. Do not confuse us. If you go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 16, he makes it clear that it was Jesus that made us. You're like, eh? There's somebody's microphone that is disturbing. Can you mute, please? So this makes it clear. Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 16. I'm not going to read all of it. Read it by yourself. It makes it clear that all things made in heaven and on earth is made by Jesus. <laughs> he just told us that his father that made, that made us now. This one will now blow you away completely. For those who know the history of the Bible, the first book of the Bible is Job. Because the Bible is not arranged in the chrono chronological uh, um, in the chronological way the, the oldest book of the Bible is the book of Job the spirit of God has made me and the breath of the almighty gives me life shoot now spirit make us again I can tell you there is no attribute of God that you know that if you study, you find that all three is attributed to all three. You read somewhere, we say, ah, and God said, let this thing go and be so. You say, oh, God, it's God the Father that said that thing. You'll be reading, reading, you'll say, and Jesus said, ah, I thought you said it was God the Father. You read, 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 and the Spirit. This is one of the things that many people that teach Trinity do not understand. This people, these three being in the in, in in the godhead they are equal and i will explain it because some people are beginning to ask questions on their mind already and i will explain it and if you come next week to listen to jesus you will understand to listen to my talk you know my the class on jesus you you understand more the three of them are equal <laughs> salvation For God, anytime they say God, they usually refer to God the Father when they are not using the word Elohim. For God so loved the world that he gave. So they are saying the action of Jesus coming was by God the Father. His only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, Jesus, shall not perish but have everlasting life. The, that, that verb, gave, that's the Holy Spirit. But that was how Jesus was born. The Holy Spirit had to fall on Mary for Jesus to go from God to human being. So all three were involved in our salvation. I didn't know this before. God just expanded my scope. God loved us. Then he used the Holy Spirit to give us Jesus so that whoever believes in this Jesus, we have everlasting life and we not perish. Listen to this, so Second Corinthians. Let me be reading it on my screen. 
Now, he, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 21 to 22. Now, he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God. Are you listening? He who has established us with Christ is God. Ah, okay. Who also has sealed us and given us the spirit in our heart as a guarantee. All three were involved in salvation. God the Father gave us Jesus. So Jesus came to redeem us and died for us and paid for our sin. And the Holy Spirit was given as a guarantee. Do you know what guarantee means? That means it will not fail. It's the Holy Spirit that is guaranteeing our salvation. That all three of them are involved in salvation. Ephesians chapter 1 verses 13 to 14 says, In him, talking about Jesus, you also uh, trusted after you had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Repeating to us, Jesus is involved, Holy Spirit is involved. God the Father is involved. Who are the people that live inside of you? You remember that Jesus promised us that, you know, if you believe and you obey my command, we'll come and live inside of you. So who are these people living inside of us? John chapter 14, verse 23, he says, Father and Son. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. So this one shows us in John 14, 23, that the Father and the Son will come and live inside of us. That one is clear. No argument. And let's go to John 14, 16 to 17. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. Abide, live with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, and who the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you so god the father is in us jesus is in us holy spirit is in us let's go to heaven because of time i'm trying to combine it if not i will have gone on each of the attributes and characteristics of god and show you scriptures where it attributes to the three of them. Some people are now preaching that there's no heaven now. God doesn't live in heaven anymore. Hey, God help us. Let me move on. There's no time. Mm. Revelation chapter 4. John the Revelator was caught in the spirit and was shown the throne of God in heaven. And this is what he saw. Immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one, one sat on the throne and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. This is the closest definition of what God the Father looks like. You won't find too many of it in the Bible. This is one of the closest Description of God the Father, physical appearance. And I'll prove to you it's not Jesus. And a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. You got that, that fire. Yeah? This one was sitting on the throne. It was like sapphire and jasper. And so it was just shiny. Anyhow. Okay, let's move on. Verse 5. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, voices, seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. You don't see, say, spirit, don't they there already? One sitting on the throne, the seven spirit of God, which you will see in, in the book of Isaiah, is, that represent the Holy Spirit. They are there burning in front of the throne. You say, ah, where is Jesus now? Wait now. Let's go to Revelation chapter 5, the next, the next chapter. 
but we are reading verses 6 to 7. And I looked and behold, in the, in the midst of the throne uh, and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took this scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. So that's to tell you, the Lamb of God is not the one that is sitting on the throne. When you go to the beginning of chapter 5, it will tell you that a scroll is on the right hand of the, of the throne. And the, the angel wept because they could not find anybody that would come and open the scroll. But then the lamb appeared and he had seven horns and seven eyes like the Spirit of God. And he now took that scroll because he's the one that has paid the price to open it. Which checks with the Bible that says, after Jesus was resurrected, God the Father said, sit at my right hand. There's one that is sitting on the main throne. Jesus is on the right hand. And the Spirit are in front of the throne there. They are all still together there. Ladies and gentlemen, I know that sometimes time makes it difficult for us to be able to cover stuff. And I've just gone for what I believe will help give you the foundation for Trinity. The doctrinal, scriptural foundation about the Trinity. And to get rid of so many of the things. Like, for example, I'm sorry to mention names, but I need, I need to let you know. The Jehovah Witnesses... They believe there is only one God. Jesus is not that important. The Mormons, they believe that, oh, uh, only one God was split into three. And Jesus is the senior brother of Satan. Guys, all of those things are not true. Even some Pentecostals, they are still preaching it today. That, oh, Jesus, because Jesus said he's God in many places, he's the only God. So all the time he said, I, don't, I can't do anything unless my father tells me. Was he talking to himself? When he said, I can only do the will of my father in heaven, was he talking to himself? So let me make it clear to you, Jesus that was on earth, and I will explain, I will expand, I will expand this next, next Thursday. Jesus that was on earth was truly a human being. And because he was truly a human being, he had to subject himself to his father in heaven. Not because Jesus in heaven was inferior to God the Father, but Jesus of Nazareth that was on earth was a man like you and I. And so he had to subject himself to a superior being, his Father in heaven. But by the time he has ascended, he's now back fully God now, like his Father, like the Holy Spirit. hallelujah glory to god this is where i want to stop and you can ask questions and the ones i can answer you know within our time limit i will do my best and the ones we can't send questions to me personally i will i will deal with them with with the whole class next thursday thank you the floor is open hallelujah any questions any clarification any comments good evening sir Good evening. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for today, sir. Uh, there's something I wanted to ask based on what you have said. And I believe many people will, on this platform will agree with me with what I'm about to say. Okay. Uh, because that is the general understanding. But just wanted to get a cl clarification, you know, yes. in terms of we're talking about the Trinity. Now, the understanding is that. The Jesus that came, it was God that came in human form. Yeah. He left his throne. He came in as a woman form, you know, to redeem man, yeah. reconcile man back to himself, you know, and um, that Jesus is God. 
also that when Jesus was living, that the Holy Spirit is also God as well. And the Bible make, made it clear that Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the Father. Yes. So now the question is that where do we go from, from here? What is exactly the Trinity? Is it God manifesting in three personalities? Or is it that each of them are God by themselves? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Like I said in the lecture, and I'm repeating it, uh, what Pastor Demola has asked, the three of them are God in their own right. I don't know if this helps anybody, but you know, I, I like to uh, speak to God every morning. And I used to say, oh, good morning, Jesus. And I said, good morning, Jesus, for a number of years. And I had, and I will hear stuff back and I write it down. Then I now listen to the teaching on the Holy Spirit. And I say, ah, maybe it's Holy Spirit I should have been saying. No. So I now started saying, Holy Spirit, good morning, Holy Spirit. And he will still answer back. I can't confuse. So he got to a stage. He now, I now, I now went before him one of the mornings. He now said, oh, I can see you are confused. He said, there are three of us and we are one. Anyone that you call, you are calling on God. That was my personal experience, which is backed by the Bible. You know, many people, you know, many people kept saying, you know, it was as if God left his throne, became a human being to come and sort us out. And uh, no, it's one of the Godhead that was chosen. And you can see that in the book of Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah 48. I'm, I'm not sure whether 48 or 44. But go and read. Who shall go for us? You know, that same us that say, let us create man in our image. They were now asking, who shall go for? In that place, you found out that the, uh, the, the um, uh, what's it called? Um, the, the name of Jesus was mentioned, not as Jesus, but as, as, um, as uh, what's it called? The something of host. You know, like that the commander of the army of heaven he was the one that said, okay, I will go. He's mentioned in Isaiah, who shall go for us? And if you have time, please meditate on Psalm chapter 2. That's a conversation between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It's something I never knew. Three of them were having conversation. Psalm 2. Psalm chapter 2. For those who are students of the Bible, you know, Psalm 1 is not the original uh, first Psalm. Psalm 2 is the original first Psalm, but that's a different story for another day. But listen to Psalm 2 you, and, and meditate on it. You'll find out that it's three of them having conversation, saying, ah, ah, who is going to sort this thing out? What is wrong with this human being? Do they think they know? Okay, who, who will go and sort this out? Okay, you go and sort this out. And we have given you the power to go and sort it out. Something along those lines, I'm paraphrasing, you understand? So everybody keeps not wanting to talk about God the Father because they've not had much dealings with him. And the reason being that because Jesus paid for our life, he redeemed our life. God has now made him Lord over us. We are, we are Jesus's property because he's the one that came to shed his blood for us. But God, the Father and God, the Holy Spirit are still involved. But Jesus is the person that we will reign with for eternity. Because in every, almost every culture of the world, if somebody uh, saves your life, then your life belongs to them. In almost every culture of the world, if somebody saves your life, then that your life that they saved belongs to that person that saved it. So Jesus now became our Lord and is one that we will dwell with us forever and ever. But because they can't be separated, we know we'll still be dealing with God the Father, we'll still be dealing with God the Holy Spirit. But Jesus is just the, the main focus because he's the one that took that risk and came and died for us. And, and any time you hear Jesus saying, he will say, my father, my father. But when he, before he died on the cross, he said, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Because he was truly a human being. He was not his, de his deity, his godly form on earth. That's why Satan was able to tempt him saying, look at the world, I will give you everything in the world. You know, everything you need, I will give it to you in the world. How can, how can Satan be saying that to Jesus? Because he knew that truly at that time, Satan was the owner of everything. Before Jesus came to pay that and, and to take the title deed from him. So everything that Satan was using to tempt Jesus, it was legit. When he says, look at the kingdom of the world, I will give them to you. Those kingdoms belong to Satan at that time. 
because of what because Adam and Eve falling in the garden. So he didn't what he didn't know was that Jesus came to to get the title deed back. It's because the Jesus that came, Jesus of Nazareth, was truly human. That's why they needed a woman to carry him. Because if a woman does not give birth to a person, they are not bona fide human being. They are just supernatural being. So the Holy Spirit still had to concoct that pregnancy, but Jesus he still had to be, you know, grow in the belly like the rest of us, and he was still born as a human being. And when he said, "Why don't you turn this stone into bread?" He knew that if he turned into his godly side, he can do it. But he came to show the rest of us how to do it by relying on the Holy Spirit. And it was the Holy Spirit that sent him into that temptation. That no, everything we do in this realm, you rely on God. So he wasn't going to go back into his godly self and just turn the stones to bread and just eat it. He can do it. Because, you know, <laughs> he's God. But he was human at that time. And it was the human side that came to show us examples of how to live how to heal, how to flow in power, how to forgive, how to relate with the things of God. He was showing us examples. Amen. Any other question or clarification? No, good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, I've got a question. Yes. Um, yes. I just want to understand for the purpose of clarification and this study, Yeah. what is the responsibility of the Trinity when we pray? Do yes. they have individual responsibility or they have collective responsibilities? Who are we praying to? Who yeah. do we pray through? Okay, what is you. their responsibilities? Thank you, sir. So the way God has, uh, the Godhead designed it, they found out that Satan came to separate us from the Godhead. That was the, that was the success in the Garden of Eden. He came to separate human beings from God. So we could no longer you know, reach God. The God that used to come and talk to Adam in the cool of the evening, it wasn't happening anymore. Until the last verse in Genesis chapter 4, then when they gave back to Seth, they now started praying again. There was a massive disconnect before that. And that disconnect carried on till Jesus came. So every time you are praying, you are praying to the Godhead. But you pray in Jesus' name because that is the only visa that guarantees you access into that place. Humanity by themselves cannot access God. Mortality cannot access immortality. It's impossible. But Jesus came to pay the price for our visa. So that every time you say, in Jesus' name, or more, you have access to the Godhead. You have access to Mount Zion. For those I have taught, some of my leaders who are on here, you can actually live your life in the court of heaven. You don't need to be arguing with anybody. By the blood of Jesus, go there and present your case and see what will happen on earth. So it was, it was like a lifetime of opportunity that Jesus came to give us. So we are still praying to Elohim. But now we pray in Jesus' name because that's the only access humans have in that place. Because there's only one human in heaven, and his name is Jesus. Oh, make her not confuse you now. But, but you, you, you get my point. So that's our high priest now, according to Hebrews chapter 4. We now have a high priest that is representing us up there. So when you call his name, then the Elohim, we have to look at, ah, this guy doesn't deserve it. But because of Jesus, let's sort him out. Oh, this lady doesn't really deserve this. Look at the nonsense she's doing. But because she called Jesus, let us, let us sort her out. So that is what grace really is. Grace, I, I, I've explained it to people in my church. I'm saying it for those who are not my church members. Uh, when we were in medical school, pass mark was 50. And when I crashed out of medical school, I got 49. 49 because a lecturer was trying to, to discipline me, but different story. So the person that got zero and me that got 49, we all failed. The person that got 49 needed one mark to pass. The person that got zero needed 50 marks to pass. Grace is what makes a difference to whatever it is you need to pass. So there was no human being that passed, none. Nobody, any anointed man or woman of God you know, nobody passed. This thing, it shocks people when I say it. Nobody passed that exam. 
it was, it's only Jesus that came to add the pass mark to us. So now for some of us, we, we needed 99. You get what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, you know, I'm embellishing now. You know what I'm, 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 I'm amplifying now. So we, some of us, we needed the entire 49 to pass. Some of us, we needed just one mark. Some people need only five marks. But guess what? If God, Jesus doesn't add his own to, to us, nobody will make it. That's what grace really is. That even at your best, which is not good enough, Jesus will add his own to it, then you will make it. That's what grace is. So don't let anybody boast. So the person that got 49 said, hey, I got 49. Oh, you still failed. Though. Me, I got zero. But guess what? It's grace. All of, both of us still need to make it. That is, that is the leveler in the universe. Jesus is the leveler. So we pray in Jesus' name to the Godhead. I hope that's clear, Dr. Ewa. Amen. Yes, sir. Any Thank questions? you very much, sir. Any questions? Any clarification? Yes, sir. I, I have a question. Yes. Thank you very much, sir, for this teaching. And in, in case of, in the part of clarity, I will yes. ask my question um, in the angle where uh, Pastor Demora asks. Yes. Now there are some there are some studies, especially the the, the, the modalism studies. Yes, it actually revealed, that. yeah, <laughs> they actually revealed that the Trinity is actually one person that appears in different form. Yeah, yeah, but our uh, our own Christianity, um, some Christianity actually told us that there are different persons, there yes. are different distinct persons. Yes. So I want to know: is the Trinity is um the Trinity that's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit? Are there uh, is it is it is it a form of God, or each of them have their different distinction? They have their right. different distinction. Holy Spirit is a person. Jesus is a person. God the Father is a person. But because they are spiritual beings, they are blended, and their purpose is one. Their purpose is one. Actions. Different actions may vary, but purpose is one. So I know about modalism. I didn't want to go into it because of time, but it's wrong. It's not. It has been. It has been flawed, and you can do your research into it. It is not true, but it's one of the things that is being preached all over the world. But no, they are distinct personalities, because you remember that Jesus said, "Do not grieve the Holy Spirit." Mm -hmm. So yeah. that means another person be that oh, don't grieve the Holy Spirit so that you, you, you don't go and be see yourself until the day of redemption. So they are, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are separate beings, but their purpose is one. And the world does not have anything like it. So there's nothing on earth you can use to compare to it. People, that's the mistake people are doing the modernism. That's that's the mistake they've made. They're trying to look for examples here. Oh, it's like a leaf that has three spikes. Yeah. It's like, no, Omo, it doesn't exist on this planet. Even in the past, when I was young and I was still immature, we used to use examples like uh, spirit, body, and soul. That's still not a good example. That's still not a good example. That's the one I used to teach when I was a young teacher of the world, because that was what I knew. But now, knowledge don't increase now. There is nothing on earth that you can compare to Trinity. It doesn't exist. It does not exist. The only existence is in Godhead. Ah. Hey. So in, in, in trying to, to compare it to things on earth, we get lost. Because if you say spirit, soul, and body, I know my spirit is the real me. My soul is just like an ephemeral space. And my, and my body is like a physical space. So... Who is Jesus? Who is Father? Who is Holy Spirit? You understand? You get lost. <laughs> because if you if you call your spirit the Holy Spirit, what's your soul? Jesus. Jesus now soul. So you just get lost. So stick to the scriptures. I'm not saying believe me. Stick to everything the scripture says. If you read, study the book of John, I wrote this 1997. When by revelation, I, I didn't even know much that time. It was just by revelation I was writing. If you study the book of John, there's no way Jesus did not mention, I can't do this so unless I see what my father is doing. I cannot do this so. It's because I see what my father is doing. That's why I'm doing it. So is he, is he, is he a mental case? Is he talking, is he referring to himself as the father? 
You understand? Is he, is he talking? Is he talking in the first person? No, no. Somebody else did that is referring to. There's somebody else that is referring to. You know. And that's why this, and you will find out that even if we had time, I will show you that the Trinity was responsible for Jesus' death. They were responsible for his resurrection. Eh? I said, when I when I listened to all these people that knew more than me and I went back to the Bible, I was just like an illiterate. I said, where have I been? Where have I been? They everything you know about God. Now all three of them did it. It is in the Bible, and you know, let the scholars go and find it, because the Bible is still the same, and I'm still alive. In the Bible, it's written there, is it this, God, killed, God the Father killed Jesus, Holy Spirit killed Jesus. I, I didn't know it was in the Bible before. And God the Father resurrected him, Holy Spirit resurrected him. I said, eh? What, what Bible have I been reading? Do not go into the Bible with your academic sense. You will get lost. And that's the mistake many of us make. And I've certainly made it before I raised my hand up. Because I'm very academic. So I was approaching things academically. Oh, um, this is not spiritual matters. They I can only be spiritually discerned. And I'm not saying uh, upus kupus. I'm not saying, oh, sorry, it cannot be explained. No, Bible explains itself. It can be explained, but only spiritually. Mm. But somebody that's not spiritual, if you are trying to explain it, you just get lost. So, but any of us listening and we are born again children of God, we have the right to access the Bible and the Holy Spirit will show us where the answers are in the Bible. The Bible interprets itself. That is what makes me happy. So we are not saying, you know, you know, when you, when you don't have an answer to something, you say, only God knows. You know, you know that, is the, that is the response of somebody that doesn't have an answer to anything. They say, only God knows. So where we will come find this God now to find out what the answer is? No, the answer is in the Bible. Ask God to lead you to them. That's why I just gave you know a few examples like you know creation, salvation, uh, dwelling inside of us. Now three of them, they are busy. You can go on and on. Jesus is bad. Jesus is uh, resurrection and death, and death and resurrection, uh, sanctification. Now three of them, see they do. I say, eh, I didn't learn this before. But because we don't have anything like that on our planet, we're struggling with the concept. We're like, ah, yeah, because that's God now. That's why they're God and we're not God now. What, what they are operating, we've never seen. Mm. Amen. Any Amen. question? Any clarification? <clears throat> Pardon me. I think there is, a, there is a question on the group. Yeah, I was going to mention. Okay. Somebody, yeah. can, you so, read it for, can you read it for me, please? Uh, okay, sir. Uh, it mm. says, thanks uh, for this lecture. Can I go back to that Isaiah where they were asking who will go for us? Yes. I always think they were angels. But were they just the Trinity then asking who will go for them? Thanks. Yes. Um, after I did, I used to think it was angels too. You are not the only person, whoever that is. Sorry, because I, I, I can't, I don't want to go flip through the screen. Don't let me go and mess it up. Uh, but Yes, I used to think it was angels until I did my studies. And I found out that, man, it was the Trinity talking, man. Because the, another thing that, that will blow your mind, you remember those three men that visited Abraham? Yes, sir. Go and study it. They were God. It was, it was God there that came. It was, you know why? It, no angel We accept worship from any human being. Go and study the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. If you, the angel, everybody, anybody that saw angel, they'll be scared. And they say, oh, do not be afraid. I'm, I'm a messenger like you. And then they'll bring message from, from the Godhead. But anytime you see something, they call an angel, but he accepts worship. Or more than a Godhead be that. He, he, the people that wrote it just didn't know how to interpret it. They just knew it was a supernatural being. At the beginning of that place where they visited Abraham, he said, and the Lord visited Abraham. And then the next verse, he will now say, three men were now walking from the something, something of memory. So you said it was God that visited him. Oh, well, that's the God that visited him. How do I know? They spoke emphatically after the visiting. At this time of life, we will visit your wife and she will give back to a child. Angels don't talk like that. Check the Bible. I'm not saying, believe me, I have my own personal experiences, but they are not, they are not relevant. Check the Bible. Angels will say, I'm from the presence of the Lord and I bring you a message. The Lord said A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
But those ones, they went to his house. Abraham cooked for them. They ate. And then they said, you know, at this time of life, your wife will give back. Oh, now God, they talk. If you go to Joshua chapter 5, it is Jesus that destroyed Jericho. Jesus. Go and read it in Joshua chapter 5. He saw an angel. And they call an angel again. He said, uh, uh, are you for us? Are you against us? I said, I'm not for you. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the commander of the, you know, of, 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 the host of heaven. Mm. And go and then do a study on the angel of the Lord's presence. Anybody who wants to do an extra, extra study, I mean, I'll be mentioning it next week because we're going into Jesus next week. The angel of God's presence in most of the time in the Old Testament. That was Jesus. That was Jesus. Mm. But I don't want to go too much. You know, that's for next week. So, mm. man, this, hmm, these people, they be God, though. I don't, I don't know how to say it to you. I say my mind is blown. Even as I'm talking to you now, my mind still can't comprehend the whole thing. I'm saying, ah, hey God, though, I don't know what else to say to you. So Jesus, don't they come this earth? Saints. Saints. And they followed the rock in the wilderness, which was Christ. Christ. Why was Jesus in the wilderness now? Hmm. He was there with them. He was there with them. Ah. <laughs> I said, sure. So they 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 they've they been moving and operating from Genesis chapter one verse two, and the spirit of the Lord, you know, hovered over the earth. They, they've all been operational since so. Under different guises. I say, eh. So please study, stick to the scripture. No matter how you respect the teacher in the word, whether na me or whether na our bigger or gazo, go back to the Bible. Because human beings can make mistakes. I wrote a whole book in 2007. And a whole chapter there, I feel like calling the book back and destroying it now. Because I've learned bigger things now. We learn in part. So if I make mistake, yeah, my mistake is innocent. And you trust in me, you, you to go swallow the mistake where I make. Both of us don't make mistakes. So no matter who you listen to, no matter how you think you respect, oh, I respect this teacher of God, not only the, the God that you should respect, oh, go back to the scripture. If what they are saying is in line, then yeah, give them their, 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 their salutation and adulation. But not only God has the final say. The, the Holy Spirit was the person that inspired the writing of the Bible. All those 40 authors, across 66 chapters over thousands of years it was the only spirit that coordinated it i did a study that nearly it nearly broke me every part of the bible from genesis to revelation every four four sentences or something refers to jesus i said where, where, where have i been since where have i been man that book is not an ordinary book oh, don't be comparing it to book oh. that, that's a supernatural delivery from god to us the bible and it will never be obsolete. So don't go say, oh, the world has become modern. So let's bend this. And you know now, let us be humane now. Or more, you don't, they lost, small, small. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. If God says it's right, it's right. If God says it will never change, it will never change. The word of God is the final authority. Because I, even as a teacher of the world, have made mistakes in the past. I'm not even talking about other people. Innocent mistake. So don't be carrying your soul and be running after people hundred percent. Oh, that's not wise. Oh, I'm not saying don't listen to people, but go and check it like Berians. Go and check it with the scripture. There was a teacher of the word of God. I won't mention his name. When he started in ministry, I'm not a proud person, but I, I used to have photographic memory when I was born. So I don't, I don't usually write anything down. I'll just be listening to every word you say. If you cough everything, I've recorded it in my brain. When this guy started teaching the word of God, I will carry notes and start writing. That was how much I respected this man of God. But in the last 10 years, all he's been teaching is heresy. Same person. Same individual. I said, sure. Even some of the some of the heresies he's teaching, even me, I know it's heresy. I don't even need to go and consult anybody. I know that uh, that is not right now. But this was personal. When he started the ministry, if he cough, I write it down. That's how much I respected him. This man knows what he's doing. But something has happened to him now. He don't stray, go another direction. I say, hey. He will say some things. I say, e? it's not in the Bible. And he has millions of people following him. So be very careful. 
Be very careful, especially where human beings are involved. Human beings, including me talking. Be careful. Everything I've said today, we will we edit it by God's grace and put it on YouTube. Go and listen to it again. Anything we know the Bible, get in touch with me. I may end up saying, oh, I repent, oh, let us learn together. This is the one I know today by the help of the Spirit, is what I've delivered to you. So please, oh, God bless you. I think we've gone over the time. I'm sorry. I don't like going too much over the time. Um, next week, Thursday, same time, and I'm going to go straight into recording from the first second because, you know, we, we've laid the foundation today. We want to look at who is Jesus because this is what confuses people. Like, okay, Godhead, then who, who can be Jesus now? I will try and answer many of the questions uh, next week, Thursday, by God's grace. And the week after, we'll be looking at the Holy Spirit. Um, Pastor Demola, can you let me look at the list? What is on number four? It's, it's marriage, sir. Marriage. Marriage. Mm -hmm. okay. That one a heavy matter. Marriage, number four. So those are the four things we are dealing with. God helping us. We are going to look at marriage from the scripture. Purely from the scripture, not from uh, apostle of marriage or no, 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 no. From the scripture. The good, the bad, the ugly. God help us. Let us pray. I'm sorry because some of you, I know you've taken some time to come here. I'm really sorry we've gone over the time. It's not my custom to start late or finish late. So I apologize from the bottom of my heart. Father, Lord, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus that the help of the Holy Spirit, the author of the Bible, we help each and every one of us to have a even better understanding than I've been able to say. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will take us into falling in love with the Bible again so we can search the scriptures because they're the ones that speak about Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will make us wiser with the help of your spirit. In Jesus' name I've prayed. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Same time next Thursday. You don't want to miss it. God bless you. And bye for now.